Aussie homes are on the brink of financial ruin. Let's have a look. Good morning, everyone. Florian here, and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your cup of nice cheap coffee, and let's have a look at another article, this time from Yahoo News, spreading the economic doom and fear that we all love to consume, that everyone has their eyes peeled for in the news and uh, just gets drawn to it, gets the views, it gets the clicks. That's why this is happening. But the older I'm getting, the more cynical and skeptical I'm becoming. I, I'm really becoming a grumpy old man. I, I'm going to be into my my ultimate form, which will be Boomer. I think that that's, that's what's going to happen. Definitely going to be. Not because I've been watching Dragon Ball Z shorts and power levels and things. No, no, no. It'll be Boomer form. So let's... Fix up this uh, little slide. Here we go. So, Aussie homes teetering on financial ruin. Now, I added the brink there to make it sound more dramatic. That's what my mind is telling me. We're on the brink of financial ruin. All these Aussies are about to collapse. It's all going under, guys. I mean, you know the game now. You know what type of things get attention. Now, for those of you that are obviously uh, regulars to the channel. I haven't been uh, churning out the content. Let me just jump back over here. I haven't been churning out the content as much as I have in the past because I have been insanely busy. We've got so much work on. It is fantastic. And, well, we've had a lot of progress on the house renovations. So, once again, my internet cable has been cut by uh, excavation equipment, and it just happens. I've got to get it reattached because we had the plumbing all put in. We've got the sewer put in, so I'm going to have a nice big fat bill for that. I'll, get, I'll do an update video, guys. It's progressed very well. So it's, it's really exciting. So that's kind of probably why I'm getting a bit cynical. The more of these type of things, like these articles I'm seeing about financial ruin and all this negativity, it's primed to elicit responses from people that click on it. You know, everyone's worried. You know, most of us have, have mortgages. You've got debt, so you've got you know, money worries. And uh, there's this fear that interest rates are going up or maybe you're coming off your fixed term. You just want to be aware. You know, it's, it's good to know what's going on out there. But we've got to be cynical and skeptical with all of these things, particularly over the last few years. How many times have we seen predictions of calamitous financial collapse? Remember, I still remember when the RBA was modeling a 40% decrease. They wanted the real estate sector to stop publishing data about property prices. Everyone thought it was fine. Finally, those people who were waiting for this correction, housing, it's unfair, it's, it's too expensive, it shouldn't be an investment, communism, all this other shit. We're finally there waiting, waiting for a correction. What do we get? What, 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 what happened? It dipped a little, what, 20%. And every man and his dog jumped in the market. Everyone saw, they saw the blood in the water and the sharks came swimming. Said, this is it, we can get in. Now, the problem is, sadly, some people would have over leveraged. They would have thought, effort, doing what we do, we need to get in. You can see, we can all picture the conversations in our head. Now, the majority of viewers of the channel, you know, they're my age or above. You know, we're getting on in years, guys. You're mid forties. You talk to your friends. It's it's. Oh, you're thinking of starting a new business? You go, no, I'm I'm forty. I can't be bothered. You know, I want to spend time with the wife and kids. I want to do this. I want to do that. It changes. You're not in your twenties anymore. So a lot of viewers would be in a situation where they wouldn't have gone too far, where they may have bought before, or that may have gotten in, or may have been a bit more sensible than someone a bit younger and brasher. And uh, well. Or maybe we know not to believe everything we hear in the media. Interest rates not going up till 2024. That didn't happen anyway. So let, let's have a look at this because I suspect this is going to be about people who have pushed themselves a little bit too far to the edge. But we'll see if this means financial ruin for all of Australia. So, <clears throat> oh, come on. About one in two Aussie households are teetering on the edge of financial crisis due to skyrocketing interest rates signaling a tough Christmas ahead for thousands of battlers struggling to make ends meet. So half of Australians, no, sorry, half of households. So what the hell does that mean? 
What's a household? Is that just every single household in the country? So one and two are on financial, on the edge of financial crisis. Now, this is based on, I think, finder data. I, I went to their website, tried to find some of their methodology behind how they do. Now, with all of this stuff, with all of the news that we're reading and uh, the social media and the, the, the circles that you're in, that will affect your interp- how you interpret all of this. If, if you're like me, working your ass off, doing 70-hour weeks. I actually did one. I don't know how. And talking to, to people, you know, engineers, professionals in, in my circle that I, I will be on the phone with, everyone is busy. Everyone is flat out. It's going nuts. I was complaining to one guy. I was going, you know, you know what happens? You're, you're, you're so busy for so long. Being normal feels like you're, you're on the verge of collapsing. and So you look for more work. So you keep looking for more work. And he goes, it's like a sine wave. And speaking to all the more experienced people, you kind of get used to it. So that, that's the perspective I have when I see these type of things. And, and the viewers of the channel... You know, looking at the demographics of the channel, we've got a lot of people in construction, a lot of people in property, a lot of people, uh, professional people watching it. Are one in two of you at risk of this? No, no, I did a survey. There we go. Look, I did my own find a knockoff. Heiser says, only 20 hours ago, we got 421. Not 420, 421. Responses, are you on the brink of financial crisis if interest rates remain the same until February 2025? 15% 15% said yes. 85% said no. Let's have a look at some of the comments here. Raise the rate and let it burn. Do anything else simply kicks the can further down the road. Have we ever had a government shutdown? I wonder how many work for the government or know they do or don't know but do. That's a good point. We've never had one. I can't see us ever having one. And we've had an election here where we've now got a more conservative government, <laughs> conservative government here in Queensland. I don't think it'll make much difference to our day-to-day lives, to be brutally honest. I suspect most people didn't take advantage of all-time low interest rates to pay off their debts. And um, Dennis is going hard to do when wages are stagnant. And Dice has replied, essentially, that you know, do whatever you can to get out of debt. Which is, yeah, I mean, that that's, that's one strategy you've got to do. But it gets harder when you get older and get tired. Maybe I'm just tired. Perhaps if interest rates doubled, I would be. But then I would just need to rent out a room and forego the luxury of living alone. Okay, so Lex has... That's the reality of it. There's a lot of things that we consider... Well, there's a lot of things people consider a necessity that you find out are actually a luxury when times get tough. Almost everyone lives beyond their means. 60 bucks a week on coffee, four streaming service subscriptions, $9 schooner. Time to get back to the basics. $9 schooner? Shit. Um, these examples are of over-leveraging. Or even, yeah, okay. That, that's, that's what happens, guys. I feel for those struggling. It's not a crime to want security for your family, nor it is selfish or greedy. Okay, so this, that, and another is, is right there. I agree with that. It's people want stability. People want a place to to live comfortably, to raise the kids, and have a nice, boring life, really. You don't want, well, hopefully you don't want the crazy drama and the nutcases and all the bullshit going on. That's not what people want. Or maybe, maybe it's just my boomer evolution kicking in there. So... There we go. No crisis, a lot of backup investments. I'd like to see rates go higher. 18% of Heiser's audience means at least one third of the general population in financial crisis. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's not 18% now, but you probably got a good point there. We got, we've got a different demo here watching the channel than the Finder survey results. Let me know in the comments, guys, if you've ever participated in one of these, these results or these surveys. Because I'm trying to find the, the demo side because they always paint the bleakest bloody picture. So let's, let's keep going through this. The staggering figures are compounded by another grim sign that one in seven or equivalent of 460 to 100,000 mortgage holders have said they'd have to sell or apply for hardship if interest rates remain the same until 2025, Feb 2025. So what, it's November now, what, three months? Okay, shit happens. One in seven. 
there's always going to be some people that are doing it tough, guys. That's just part of life. We all know that. And many of us have been through it and realize it comes good at a later time in life. Consumer research expert Graham Cook calling for urgent reforms as he wants a financial situation for many families could get worse, leaving them teetering on the brink of financial crisis. I, I find it hard to believe. I mean, okay, okay, half of Aussie's mortgage holders are facing financial stress and up here, financial ruin and now financial crisis. They're using different terms everywhere that all mean different things depending on what's financial stress. Who Whose term are you going to take? We're going to go good old... Martin North DFA one, and uh, where if you got essentially more money going out than coming in, which frankly I think is the best one to do. You know, I'd say that's the Dave Ramsey one where you where you're screwed. You got more money going out than coming in, then you've got to stem the flow. With emergency savings depleted and the RBA yet to signal significant rate cuts, many fear their livelihoods are at stake. How does your house your house isn't your livelihood? It's, it's part of your quality of life. Or are you going to lose your job? Is that what you're afraid of? The head of consumer research at Finder said, as New Year looms, urgent relief may be needed to prevent a wave of financial hardship. Finder's latest data found a record 47% of Aussie households were struggling with repayments. We, we, I think we had a look at that survey. 47%. But it's based on their... their this is the thing. We need to see where they're getting their, their sample from. Who the hell are they calling up for this? That nearly half of us Aussie households we're struggling with repayments. You've got to be quite rigorous in in pulling apart the sample methodology, uh, the sample size, sample types, and the methodology they use for doing these type of surveys. Look at all the political polls; they're, they're they are designed to sway your decision, particularly in America, if you're going to vote or not. We'll have we'll have to see what happens if if you get Kamala or Trumpy. It's it's going to be interesting. Oh boy, those Democrats are not going to handle it. I mean, I don't understand. He's been in power before. He was just a bloody wet token Republican, not that different from any other lot. But, you know, maybe with a few offensive tweets, who cares? He's from New York. And they're thinking it's 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 the coming of bloody the end of the world. If he gets back in, I, I don't understand. I, I blame the media, I think. People living in a bubble. That's what it is. Anyway, back to this. Further, still an equivalent of 1.3 mortgage holders would have to cut back further to keep affording their mortgage over the coming months if the Reserve Bank doesn't cut the official cash rate to 4.35%. Well, according to the survey conducted by Finder uh, and extrapolated up to the uh, total population, 1.3 million mortgage holders may have to cut back. Or they've said they will have to cut back. So what? Who cares? That's part of life, cutting cutting back expenses. What, what did I... I bought a, a luxury. I bought a, another bloody streaming service, I think Paramount Plus, so I could watch some some old Star Trek episodes because it was, it was easier for me to pay the 10 bucks a month than to get out the DVDs and get it all up and running. Shit, I'm the demo, aren't I, guys? There you go. Low petrol prices or lower petrol prices and electricity rebates from both the federal and some state governments have reduced the nation's headline inflation, dropped to two point eight percent in the September quarter. Yes, but that's just—I mean, it's kind—it's of, all fake. It's all fake. It's artificially pumping down inflation, perhaps to uh, to manipulate or to influence people's behaviour. I mean, let me know in the comments if you got that free what a thousand bucks off your power bill. You know. We're all going to have to pay for that later. It, it, it's not free. It's not free money. Any money that they give you, they just take away from you later. So all these gimmies that young generations are uh, begging for, it's all going to be taken away from them later. I, I guess it's just lived experience. People don't understand that. Seemingly in line with the target band of 2 to 3% to see a rate reduction. No. Th- well, that's not a rate reduction. 2 or 3% is the target range. So if we're at the target range at the current cash rate, why are they going to change it? Now let's see if my... Is that going to work? Yes, I haven't updated it in some time. One of the problems with it being in two places, because we've got the rental up the street and I'm trying to record here in the house, is whenever things get broken, like 
NB, uh, NBN data cables to the to the connection that the street gets snapped. I have to move servers. I have to reconfigure things, and stuff like this breaks on my vMix. So I'm glad it's there. So, but the point I wanted to make is bringing up this good old chart that we've seen many times on the channel. Here is look at what the cash rate was in the before time before 2008. Now that 4.25 percent. What are we? 4.25 or 4.35? Hang on, I'm not even. It tells you how how much busy I've been, guys. I've been sitting on my ass draft, and 4.35 percent is the cash rate at the moment. So there, there we go. Okay, you can't see it because I've got a cover, but there we go. Uh, so if we look back at historical precedent, we're more in line with where we were in the past. So why why would you expect them to cut the cash rate, everyone? The central bank uses the underlying inf inflation rate, which came in at 3.4%. While both numbers are two-year lows, it's unlikely the IBA will be cutting the cash rate when it meets on Melbourne Cup day on Tuesday. It's already in Melbourne Cup. Shit, it's November, isn't it? It's Melbourne Cup. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, it's, it's been nuts, guys. This 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 year's been been crazy for me. In a good way. I mean, it's great making money and then instantly spending it on your house so you don't feel like you're making any money, but I shouldn't complain. Monday, mon oh, Monday, money's... Home loan expert Mansur Soltani said more than half of Australian homeowners are concerned. Well, everyone's always concerned. You're always worried. Where you know? Where's the next? Uh, where's your money going to come in from? What's going on with work? Are there enough projects on? Is things coming in? That's just normal. It's not news. Households have been battling rising interest rates for the past few years, and many are now at the end of their tether. He said. With high living costs adding further pressure, many families are just holding on, waiting for a rate cut to ease the financial strain. With Christmas around the corner, many Australians are having to tighten their belts even further. And unfortunately, any hopes of a Christmas rate cut have been dashed. So they're not saying no Christmas rate cut. I mean, even if it is, you won't... It's probably best that they don't cut the rate Christmas, wait till next year. Because if they cut it, the advantages of it won't kick in for another month. And then people will go stupid on Christmas spending more money and racking up more credit card debt than they should. Buying all stuff that they don't need. Moomoo's? Well, what the hell's Moo Moo? I guess they're getting quotes from everyone. Jacinta Amir said, The market's fellas investors hoped rate cuts were dashed on the latest consumer price index figures. Fat chance of a rate cut, folks. Inflation is well above the target, while unemployment is strong. What is the unemployment rate? Let's bring that up. ABS. Let's see. Unemployment, 4.1%. Yeah, I mean, it's not that bad, guys. Seriously. Unemployment under 5%. And I know there are other figures. You can essentially double it to get the, double it to get the real unemployment rate, but yeah, come on. Seriously. We're, we're, it's, we're a bit spoiled here in Australia, aren't we? We are bloody spoiled here in Australia. <laughs> the devil's in the d -del. Trim mean inflation is what the RBA's pref um, preferring inflation, preferred inflation gauge fell exactly in line with the expectations. For struggling homeowners, Mr. Cook urged them to tighten their belts for a few months if they can. Reach out to your lender, negotiate. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. If they refuse to lower your rates, it may be time to explore refinancing options. I mean, this is all milk toast advice here, you know, and there's no person, no, well, shit, I hope not. I hope you're not getting a wake-up call from a bloody Yahoo article. Shit, they probably are, you know. That would explain the voting preferences of a lot of people in this country. You know, sitting, sitting there, counting their virtue signals. Oh, I got 10 virtue signals today, yay. Home ownership falls. At the same time, as Aussies are struggling to pay off their mortgage, the number of Aussies that can even get into the housing market is falling. Figures run by PropTrack for a new wire show the numbers of Aussies who are in housing remains pretty similar to a decade ago. Using census data from 2021 and comparing it to 2011, PropTrack found 29.9% of Australians fully own their home in comparison to 31%. Meanwhile, the number of Aussies with a mortgage remains nearly the same, 33.2 to 33.3%. That means that 63.1% of Aussies own a home compared with 64. Point, it's, it's, oh, who cares? 
this is this is an insignificant difference. Oh no, one point two percent difference. Oh shit, the, the world's collapsing. What this is showing you here, guys, you got over sixty percent of voters own a home or have a mortgage. That's why. That's why things won't change. Okay, that's why things won't change. If you're a young and dumb voting for green and wanting all these economic interventions that you don't realize have been tried before again and again and again and have failed every single time, there's historical precedent of it. You can just look at Ireland, look at their interventions in the rental market and what happened there. Did everyone get cheap rent? No, there were lines in the street to try and get into a property. They, they stuffed it up. This is why you want to limit the intervention because it disincentivizes investment, it disincentivizes people getting into the sector, and it causes more problems. Watch Victoria. Watch as investors get out. We don't want to live in a country where all of our rental stock is owned by megacorps, banks, unions, super funds. No, we do not want that. Is that the maybe maybe that's the Australia some people want? Shit. Imagine the taxes will be milked from. Mish Tan, ABS head of financial statistics, said fewer Aussies took out new mortgages in September. The number of new owner occupiers fell by 3.2%. Yeah, well, there we go. The falls were led by Queensland, fell 9.2%. Yep. Okay, ACT. The civil servants rose nearly 20%. Well, there you have it, everyone. So let's let's have a bit of a chat about this one, eh, guys? So we're teetering on financial ruin, uh, potentially a financial stress, or we're on the brink of of collapse. I, I don't know, everyone. I guess I'm just getting too cynical for all of this stuff. I mean, you need to be aware of what the news is. The news isn't there to inform you. The news is there to encourage your views. So, what, fear, economic crisis, sells, particularly in Australia, anything to do with housing fear, sells and gets the attention. How many times have we heard claims of calamitous falls happening again and again and again and again and again? How many, how many times have we seen YouTubers crying in tears so sad that they're not helping their viewers when things are about to collapse? That, that, that disgusts me. That, that actually sickens me when people do shit like that. Uh, I have no... It's, it's all fake bullshit. You know that. It is complete fake bullshit that they do to, to suck up people. I can't. Yeah. And anyway, I guess the takeaway here is if you're in this situation, you need to sort your shit out. It's that simple. You need to get more money coming in and less money coming out. It's not rocket science. And if you have to, sell your shit. Sell electronics, sell gizmos, sell gadgets, cut back to the bone on what you need to do. Eat terrible food. Carb load for a while, then fast every other day to, to drop your insulin levels. Find ways to make do. I'm talking from experience here. Because the bad times only last as long as your perspective is embedded in that. And that's the danger with all of this stuff, with all the, the negative news. There's a channel I stumbled upon and it's purely targeted at disenfranchised Gen Zs, at younger millennials, just with how shit their lives are. There's a whole plethora of these channels now on YouTube that just focus on this. Just milk in the negativity because it gets the views and they can make a living off it. Pretty depressing though. Anyway, guys, thank you for watching. Like, share, subscribe to the channel. Apologies for the lack of content. Not dead, just very busy. So take care. I'll see you all next time. Bye for now.